when you're here on Stone Rare to be lulled into a bit of a false sense of security when you see the amazing seabird colonies here. Our numbers are increasing for lots of seabirds like puffins and our Manchi otters are doing incredibly well, the largest colony in the world. So on the face of it, it looks all very positive, but I think it's really important to remember the threats that our seabirds are facing and actually all of our marine life with massive mountain pressure on our oceans. And here in, in Wales, in, in Pembrokeshire, there are, our seas are under more pressure than ever. So today on Scrimo, it's a really busy day. There are water users all over the place. There are yachts, there are kayaks, people in tenders and fast boats. So there's all sorts of threats there to our seabirds in terms of disturbance and our marine mammals as well. And so in Pembrokeshire, we have a marine code of conduct that helps people to know how to behave around birds and especially seals as well. There's also lots of other threats that many of us are aware of, things like plastic pollution. So we're, we're very familiar with plastic washing up on our beaches and lots of people do beach cleans, which is fantastic. And we're all quite familiar with seeing seabirds with netting in their nests, you know, fishing, discarded fishing gear in their nests. Gannets, especially in Pembrokeshire, suffer from that and they can become entangled in their nests. And we know that many of our species, especially fulmers, ingest plastic thinking it's food. So there's some quite obvious threats that we see every day to our seabirds that we can act upon. There are lots of unseen threats and I think they're the really key ones. So in terms of the changing climate and the climate crisis that we currently face, just those small changes in, in air temperature, sea surface temperature can affect all aspects of seabird, uh, seabirds' lifestyles. So it can affect their prey, the fish they eat and where that is and if they can find it or not. And it can affect their, their survival from year to year. We saw that a couple of years back when we had some massive, very powerful storms in the Atlantic right through the winter, one after the other after the other. And our seabirds can cope with rough weather, they spend the winter at sea. But actually, if those storms become more regular, and if they become more powerful, it really can start to impact on the populations we see on the island in the breeding season. And that's why on SCOMA we monitor everything that they do. So we have um, researchers, staff and scientists here who follow seabirds through the season, from when they return and build their nests, to the eggs they lay, to whether the eggs hatch and whether those chicks fledge, and then whether they return as adults. So lots of our birds have um, plastic colour rings on them so we can identify them individually. And that will tell us if birds are making it through the winter getting to be breeding age themselves and producing their own chicks. So that's, that research work is so important to pick up the changes that might be quite subtle, but with, over time you do see them. So if the research work is, is long running, like some of the projects in Ronsgoma, you do, do start to see trends and that will help us to identify issues that might not be obvious from year to year otherwise without that work. It just underlines the importance of the work that the Wildlife Trust do in collaboration with our academic partners on these islands.